adrenal medulla, so cool. Part of the sympathetic nervous system, right? But it's going to result in a longer lasting response because we have a chemical messenger going throughout the bloodstream. So we're gonna start in the lateral horn again with a preganglionic neuron, and that's gonna travel out. And where do we think it's gonna to go to? I'm not gonna to try to draw adrenal gland. I'm gonna have one pop up. Where is it? On top of the kidneys, little endocrine glands on top of the kidneys. That's where this is. We're gonna have this cell synapse on cells that are within the adrenal medulla. I'm gonna get a different color for our adrenal medulla cells. It's kind of cool is it's thought that this adrenal medulla, medulla means the inside. Um, the adrenal medulla tissue is thought to have developed from the same tissue as ganglia. So it can be thought of as a modified ganglia. This, so this is basically our synapse right here, right? All I said all preganglionic neurons have to synapse. If that helps you to think of it that way, it's kind of true. So this is our cell inside the adrenal medulla. This cell, is it gonna have, am I gonna draw an axon for it? No, it's not nervous tissue. It is a gland. So it is going to release by exocytosis. It's gonna release into the bloodstream, what? Norepinephrine and epinephrine. These two chemical messengers that you already know something about, right? So if we have this blood vessel, let's say, go out into the body, we now have norepinephrine and epinephrine circulating throughout the entire body where it's going to bind to the heart, the intestines, smooth muscles, uh, pupil muscles, um, everywhere, the rectal pili of your, um, that make your hair stand on end. What determines whether it's going to affect a certain organ or not? This is a really good, important question actually. What determines whether this little molecule can have an effect on cell X? Whether it has a receptor, right? There's a receptor on here, then there can be a response. That's it. This results in a longer lasting response to a stressor because you have hormones circulating throughout the body. It takes a little bit longer to come about, um, but and that's why you have that, the, that direct innervation as well. But this can be, can supplement then. It's a coordinated response to a stressor. You've also got some other cortisol and some other things that are even longer lasting. The stress response is huge and it's designed to allow you to respond acutely and then continue to um, mobilize glucose to replace where it was used right, so your skeletal muscles use glucose, you then need to be continuing to remove glycogen from the liver to replace that. So it's kind of for immediate response and then a little bit of delayed response as well.